The 3 millimeter headless compression screw is useful in treating articular fractures and non-unions of small bones in the hand, wrist, and foot, such as the scaphoid. Implants and Instruments The screw has a 3 mm cancellous thread profile at its tip and a 3.5 mm cortical thread profile at its head. Both tip and head threads have an identical pitch. However, the head threads have a double start for easier insertion. The tip of the screw is self-drilling and self-tapping for easier insertion into hard bone. The screw has a cannulation of 1.15 mm for percutaneous insertion over a guide wire. The short and long thread lengths make it possible to use the screw for different fracture patterns. The following instruments will be used in this exercise. A 1.1 mm guide wire with threaded tip. A 2.0 1.1 mm double drill guide. A measuring device for determining the correct screw length. A 2 mm cannulated drill bit for pre-drilling. A handle with compression sleeve for closing the fracture gap and controlling the degree of interfragmentary compression. And a cannulated screwdriver with color markings to control the degree of countersinking of the screw. Before it's introduced into the bone, the 3 mm headless compression screw is attached to the compression sleeve by an internal thread that matches the thread of the screw's head. The compression sleeve and screw are connected together to form one instrument, which will allow the surgeon to use the headless compression screw as a lag screw. Mechanical Principles these basic steps are followed, regardless of the specific indication. The guide wire is inserted into the bone. In hard bone, pre-drilling is done with the cannulated 2 mm drill bit. Pre-drilling should stop short of the threaded portion of the guide wire. After measuring the screw length, a screw is attached to the compression sleeve and its handle. This assembly is inserted over the guide wire. Further rotation of the sleeve will first close the fracture gap and then compress the fracture fragments. When the appropriate compression has been achieved, the handle of the compression sleeve is removed. Then the cannulated screwdriver is inserted into the compression sleeve. After the cannulated screwdriver has been correctly seated in the screw head recess, the green mark of the screwdriver shaft will be visible at the top of the compression sleeve. While firmly holding the compression sleeve, screw insertion is continued with the screwdriver. If the screw is countersunk until the yellow mark is visible, it will be flush with the bone surface. If the screw is countersunk until the red mark is visible, it will be seated two millimeters below the bone surface. It should be noted that compression can be achieved only when rotating the compression sleeve. No additional compression is generated during countersinking. The screw is simply advanced into the bone while compression is maintained by the compression sleeve. Surgical approach. It is critical to accurately localize the correct entry point. The surface markings that are important for an open approach for fixation of a scaphoid fracture are the radiocarpal joint, the flexor carpi radialis tendon, and the tubercle of the scaphoid. The flexor carpi radialis sheath is opened through a longitudinal incision that is curved at the wrist flexion crease. The tendon is placed ulnarly and the floor of the sheath is opened distally revealing the frontal structures of the radioscaphoid joint. The scaphoid tubercle is exposed by sharp dissection and the radioscaphoid joint is opened. Fixation 
it is essential to identify the correct entry point for the guide wire in the distal pole of the scaphoid. This scaphoid entry point must go deep enough into the scaphotrapezial joint for the path of the screw to follow the long axis of the bone and not lie obliquely across it. To gain access to the correct entry point, a small portion of the overlying trapezium may have to be removed, with either a small osteotome or a cannulated reamer. As an alternative, correct entry can be gained as it is here by opening the scaphotrapezial joint capsule and levering the trapezium dorsally to reveal the distal pole of the scaphoid. The guide wire is inserted using the 1.1 mm double drill guide. The tip of the guide wire should remain just within the proximal pole of the scaphoid. The depth is measured. Both the countersink depth and the width of the fracture gap are deducted in order to calculate the correct screw length. In this case, the measurement reads 21 millimeters. Since the countersink will be 2 millimeters and the fracture gap is 1 millimeter, 3 millimeters are subtracted. With 18 millimeters as the maximum length, a 17 millimeter screw is selected to make sure that the cortex of the proximal pole is not penetrated. It is also possible to choose between a long and a short thread screw. The long thread screw will be selected only when the far fragment, in this case the proximal pole, is large. Pre-drilling is done with a cannulated 2 mm drill and drill guide. The threaded tip of the guide wire should not be over-drilled. It is recommended to drill across the fracture site. The screw is attached to the compression sleeve by its internal thread, and the compression sleeve handle is mounted. The screw and compression sleeve are introduced over the guide wire. The screw is inserted into the scaphoid and across the fracture. This step generates considerable torque in the fracture fragments, so it may be necessary to stabilize the fragments with a second parallel K-wire. However, for this exercise, stabilization is done by firmly holding the fracture fragments. The screw is inserted until the compression sleeve touches the bone surface. The surgeon uses this device to control the degree of compression. It must be kept in mind that the threads of the screw will be stripped and compression lost if the sleeve is over-tightened. Once the correct reduction and compression have been achieved, the compression sleeve handle is removed and the cannulated screwdriver is inserted into the compression sleeve. When the green mark is visible, the screwdriver is engaged in the, in the screw head recess. The compression sleeve is held between the finger and thumb as the screwdriver is turned. The sleeve maintains compression while the screw is advanced into the bone. When the yellow marking is visible, the screw is flush with the surface of the bone. Continuing to turn the screw until its red mark is no longer visible indicates that the screw has been countersunk by two millimeters. The compression sleeve and guide wire are removed. The rigidity of the fixation and position of the screw head can be seen here. Clinical application. In this clinical application, the 3 mm headless compression screw, or HCS, has been used percutaneously to stabilize a scaphoid fracture.
three weeks post-operatively.